Buenas noches, amigos. We are here in Los Angeles, California, having just seen a phenomenal evening of flamenco dancing, musical performance. It's an extraordinary event to participate and experience. You feel like you're participating in the event with the performers. So we're going to go and speak to a few of the performers tonight, the musicians as well as the dancers. So come with me and let's take a look. I've had um, about uh, 22 years overall experience as a performer starting at age uh, nine when I took my first tap class. And that was my first experience with making music with my feet and realizing that this was a way to communicate and that it was basically really cool and that this was it. And that's when I made my decision to be a dancer. So I walked in there and it was the Café de Chinitas in Madrid. And I was looking at the dancer on stage, and I said, wow, is that a woman or is that a man? I'm not sure, because they were so strong, you know, and she was dancing with pants and everything. And it turned out to be a woman. And the hostess walked up to me as I was watching the show, can I help you? Uh, yes, I'm interested in, in performing here. You know, I'd like you to give me a try. Oh, yeah, you came six months ago. We have your card already. Yeah, okay. Um, and then she, she waited and she looked at me and she said, um, do you feel capable of doing this? And we both looked at the performer on stage and I thought in my mind, well, I can't do it like that, but I wasn't going to tell her that. I said, yes, absolutely. Yes. Hold on. She went somewhere, came back, and when she came back, she said, okay, come tomorrow at 1030. I'll show you to your dressing room. I swear to God, that's the way it happened. And that was my break. That was my break in Spain because the people in, that live there also hear uh, the other things that are going on. So yes, they preserve their culture, you know, their flamenco culture, but they're still around everything else that's going on. Huge jazz scene, huge hip hop scene, you know, and so these influences eventually come out in the way they dance. So it's a very interesting particular style and groove that happens in Madrid that I that I really enjoy it. So it's, it's more reflective of, I think, who I am as a person, too. Um, I got involved in flamenco because my sister, my older sister, got involved and I was kind of into everything that she was into, a little copycat brother. And um, I started classes with Linda Vega in Santa Barbara, where I grew up. And then after a few years there, I started taking workshops, studying with Roberto Amaral in Los Angeles for quite a, quite a few years. And then eventually went over to Spain, where I stayed for about six months, and now I continuously return there whenever possible. In order to, to perfect your technique as much as possible, you really need to be there. Um, Los Angeles and, and um, the United States has a lot to offer in the way of flamenco, but it's just an, an entirely different experience, getting it firsthand, experiencing what it's like to um, spend time with the gypsies where flamenco started, and to hear the music every day is really the most important thing. And so you kind of have to create that atmosphere for yourself here if you ever want to grow.
the footwork of, of a dancer is supposed to be like another drum. It's supposed to really contribute to the whole ambiance of the flamenco production. Um, at the same time, the, the singing and the guitar and the, the palmas behind you and all of that coming together, even in a moment when you're not making any noise yourself, you, you have to feel those rhythms inside you to make anything come to life, whether it be just a snap of the head or um, nothing. Maybe if there's a big beat that everyone expects you to hit, you just let it go. And then you get the next one. Just you know, it's gotta it's gotta change every time, and that's where the improvisation comes into play. In America, I find as a flamenco dancer myself here in Hollywood, um, what when people think of flamenco dancers, they think of um, someone stomping a lot or just like snapping like a wind up monkey or something. You know <laughs> what I mean? Uh, there are a lot of stereotypes for flamenco. Uh, Everyone does their best to, to stay true to the traditional art form. At the same time, I'm in a place here that I hope to, in a way, be kind of a pioneer. If you appeal to a more commercial audience, by giving them some of what they imagine flamenco to be, it provides an avenue for the real stuff to come through. And hopefully it becomes a, a, a big thing that the, the people of the United States will really learn to, to love and appreciate. I started dancing when I was seven. Um, I started learning Spanish classical and um, a little bit of flamenco, but not really flamenco like Sevillanas. And then when I was about 12, I started to learn flamenco from, the, uh, from a woman uh, in Santa Barbara. And, uh, and then I just continued. I, I, I shifted my focus. I did Spanish classical up until I was probably 16 or 17. Um, but I always did flamenco at the same time. And then flamenco just, gen just started to predominate. Uh, and so then I went to Spain in 2003, I studied there for about three months, and then I was in Spain in 2006 to study again for like three months. The jaleos, um, the jaleos are really, really important um, because the jaleos are encouragement. So there's a number of different words you can say, you know, como ale, vamos, asa, whatever. It's, it's something that you feel and it's something you give to the dancer to, to help them do a better job and to create a, a richer sound with the music um, and just to say, you know, encourage someone, you know, you're doing a good job, you know, keep going, keep going, you know, and you, you give more of yourself that way. So jaleos are, are, very, are very important because that makes the performance much more exciting and, it, and it, whoever's dancing appreciates it too because it gives them something to dance for. Besides just having the cante and the music and everything, the jaleo is like your way of giving that energy to the dancer. It's a lot of improvisation also because, you know, the dancer, you know, automatically have to know what to do. That's the thing. We partner, we together, and we, you know, it's a lot of people, and even rehearsal with them, you know, because he knows his job very well. I know my job. You know your job, I know my job. Let's do it. You know what I say? Different people prefer rehearsal, technically, prefer rehearsal. But sometimes rehearsal is not good because the time they show come on, you forget because you're nervous or a lot of people make you nervous or you mistake a little step that there. It's better for me, follow your instinct for me. It's follow. Just to the show, you know, just communicate with me. That's the beauty thing about flamenco, communication. It's very important. Mm -hmm.